in this question for f dot dot from zero inclusive to infinity mapped onto r comma where f of x is equal to x plus two in a bracket squared plus six you have to find the domain and the range so first of all the domain that's been given to you already in the question so whenever you have this part of this kind of notation when you've got f dot dot something what they're really always telling you is that whatever's here is the domain so that means the domain for this question is from zero inclusive to infinity so that's a key thing you need to remember so that's done to find the range of this function with this domain and this is a quadratic function you really need to sketch the graph so you can see what's going on because there's a turning point in the graph and you don't know where it is really located in relation to this domain so i'm going to do that for you now i'm going to sketch that graph so there are the axes and the easiest thing to find first of all when a quadratic is in turning point form as it is here is to find that turning point and the x value is always the value of the bracket the value of x that makes this bracket equal to zero and that would be minus two minus two plus two equals zero so x is minus two that's the x coordinate of the turning point and then whatever number's been added here so six so minus two six minus two six so it's about here and the parabola is upright because if you expanded that bracket you would have a positive x squared term so you're really just looking at the sign in front of this bracket if it was minus that would make the x squared term minus and it would be an upside down parabola but because it's a positive that means it's going to be upright so the parabola is going to be doing something like that and I'll do that like such and now looking at the domain from zero so x is zero which is here to infinity so you only want this bit on the right hand side so i'm going to dot out the other part that you don't need like that and that's the part of the graph that you want so to figure out the range from here you need the lowest y value which is at this point here which is the y-intercept and you also need the highest value so this is heading off to infinity so you just need to figure out the y-intercept so to figure out the y-intercept as always no matter what equation you've got you always let x equal zero and so y is going to equal zero plus two all squared plus six so zero plus two is two so i'll put this step in two squared plus six two squared is four four plus six is equal to 10 and so that means that that value there is 10 and so that means that the range is going to be from 10 to infinity now this zero is included here so that means that that if there was a dot on the end of that graph it would be a colored in dot and you would include that 10 and infinity never has a square bracket if this was a round bracket here on this zero that would mean that on the graph that would have an open circle and that would mean that point wouldn't be included on the graph so the y value of 10 would have a round bracket so you've got to pay attention to what kind of brackets are on the domain when it's this type of question you always have to pay attention to the brackets on an interval like this um, uh, you just need to so that's the domain and the range and that's how you do this type of question so once again this is always the domain this is the co-domain you don't really need to know a lot about what that is it's really just saying that um, this graph is going to be put on a map which contains all of the real real numbers all the possible values that uh, all real numbers so that's what really all that's about it's not hugely important I've never seen a question about codomain on any of the exams in the last 14 years so 
uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that at this stage. So the key thing is this one here, which is the domain, and especially when it's any kind of quadratic, cubic, quartic, or whatever, you really need even a linear function. No matter what type of graph, you really need to sketch it so you can figure out what the range is. So that's the key, two key things that you need to be aware of in this type of question. Now, here's another example with a restricted domain. So once again, this is the domain. So for f dot dot minus 1 inclusive to 3 non-inclusive mapped onto r, where f of x is equal to minus x squared, you have to find the range of f of x. So you already know that that's the domain. So again, what you really need to do for this one is sketch it. And sketching y equals uh, minus x squared. That's an upside down parabola, and I'll draw it over here. Okay, so there it is, and I've just had to fudge this a little bit. It's supposed to be passing through naught naught, so I'll pretend it is. And the domain is from minus 1 to 3, so x is minus 1 is here somewhere, and x is 3 is somewhere over here. So there is the graph from x is minus 1 to x is 3. And this, again, is a square bracket, so the x value of minus 1 must be included, so you need to make sure that that's colored in. And the 3, that is not included, so that needs to be an open circle. So from here, the range is what is the high, lowest y value, and that happens down here, and that happens when x is equal to 3. So what you really need to do is sub x equals 3 into here to figure out what, what y is equal to. So if x equals 3, y is going to equal to equal minus 3 squared. So only the 3 is being squared and that equals 9. So the whole thing equals minus 9. So that's the lowest value here. And I'll put in the coordinates 3 minus 9 and the lowest value minus 9. And the highest value is this turning point here. So the y value there is 0. And at the 3, this is not included. So that means that needs to be a round bracket there. And the 0 is included. So that's a square bracket. So that's the answer to this question. And a few key points with this question, similar to the last one, but ended up being uh, different in uh, a different way, if that's what different, in a different way, slightly different. And what's actually happened here is that it looks like these two brackets have reversed in, like, from what they were in the domain to what they were in the range. But that's really because the turning point ended up being the highest point, and this uh, it just depended on a lot of things, like the fact that it was an upside down parabola. Um, the turning point was included this time in the graph. So what you really always have to do is sketch the graph. And what a lot of students do without thinking is they think, well, this is the lowest x value and that's the highest x value. This value subbed in will give me the lowest y value and this subbed in will give me the highest y value. But that's incorrect. Sometimes that will work, but it all depends on what what the equation is and what these values actually are. So really the only way of getting the right answer is to, in one way or the other, either type it into your calculator and look at it, look, look at it, look at it, or draw the graph. I recommend drawing the graph because you get better at drawing graphs and you remember stuff a lot better. So that's really the key difference with this question and it's kind of, uh, uh, looks really easy because that's an easy, a fairly simple equation compared to the last one, but there's a there's, um, and it's not that hard. But if you if you don't draw the graph, uh, it's difficult to come up with the right answer. Is really the point I'm making here. So I hope that all makes sense. These two questions on restricted domains, and uh, it's that's about it for this lesson now.